quarterback going up against a defense that is known for throwing a high volume of pressures and an array of pressures. What to you is the biggest challenge of readying Justin for what he's going to see from, from that defense? I think when you face this defense, even without a rookie quarterback, you you, um, you want to be disciplined to stay with your rules. You know, you, you hope that, that everything that you face, even if it's unusual, even if it's coming series to series different ways, uh, falls into the rules that you first put in in training camp. And just everyone stay with your rules, communicate, be on the same page. Because um, we faced uh, this scheme with veteran quarterbacks, and it's really been the same thing. So I think, I think for, for Justin, it's, it's a great learning lesson for him that, hey, this is why we install the way we do in, in the off season. This is why you have OTAs and you're here in, in May and June to, to learn all the rules and to get everyone together. And then, you, again, you repeat it in training camp. And then because some throughout the course of the season, you're going to face some teams where their blitz schemes are small amounts and, and you can kind of really zero in. You're going to face some teams like this where they have a wide variety, and you just have to stay with your rules. So it'll be it'll be good learning for them. Well, a combination of the fact that their, their run defense has been so good, and they've obviously played with the lead. You know, a lot of opponents just haven't run the ball very much against them. What's the challenge of the patience? You know, it's something that's worked for you guys, knowing kind of what you're going up against in that. Well, I think I think some of it we'll all know as we know how the game goes. You know, some of it you can you can plan and predict. And some of it, we, we you have to play the game as it as it plays out. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, uh, I wouldn't take away credit from their defensive front by saying that it's all because their offense scores. I think, the you know we, we know a lot of these players who've been around the league for a while on defense and that, that they're very good players and we know that the, the kind of scheme that they run and and uh, certainly. Uh, it's, it's a formidable job trying to trying to run the ball against them. Where has uh, Justin Fields made the most progress to date? Oh, gosh, oh, I guess I, I probably I don't know if I could do the most. I guess I think this, just the list of things comes from um, the communication with the other players and and being uh, uh, you know, I think as a rookie being able to. Uh, Communicate how he sees things and how he likes things, not just with the coaches in the in the meeting rooms, but also with the players. Uh, you know, it, the quarterback's opinion matters. You know, it's just a fact. And there's veteran receivers, and they have the ways they've done things. But in the end, the quarterback has the ball in his hand and has got to be the one to trust it to throw it. So I think he's just as he as he goes, has grown in his confidence and his ability to communicate it to the players. And I think that's that's been good to watch. I, th I think his play speed over time just keeps getting better and better. It, it shows up, obviously, in practice quite a bit. And sometimes on game day, uh, you know, we, we can check off boxes. And sometimes we see things that we still need to pick up the play speed. But that's, that's the process we're in. Matt, Matt said that, that, that you guys, Matt, and all of you guys threw too much at him in the Cleveland game. So they have since, you guys have since simplified. Is that where Justin's opinion comes in more or where his opinion matters about what he is comfortable with doing game to game? I, I think you got to, sometimes you got to believe what you see as a coach. So with any quarterback, you, you can, you can trust what you see yourself, you know, what, what you see with your eyes on live in person on the practice field. And then what you see accumulated over games. And so uh, you, you'd like to put that together, you know, the, the, the hard evidence with their opinion and what they say. And, uh, but that, that's kind of the art of coaching the quarterback and, and building the game plan over time. Um, are we, you know, here's a concept that a certain quarterback doesn't really know well. He hasn't run it in the past. Well, you can throw it out or you can put it in and just start practicing it. And then over time, he gets comfortable with it. He sees it in practice. And, and maybe it's on the call sheet sometimes. And you feel pretty strongly you're not going to call it in this game. But you're going to – how else do you grow as an offense unless you work on things that you aren't good at? If you just keep doing the same thing over and over, you get – that people catch up to you pretty quick. How dependent is this offense in its current state on the run game? In other words, uh, how capable are you of scoring touchdowns if they just don't let you run? Well, we weren't we weren't at the end of the last game, obviously, um, and that I, I think what we did the last three games uh, had us at, you know, uh, as far as the run volume had us at two wins, and then we went into the game and and we had 
whatever setup we had there near the end of the game to be close, but we couldn't finish it. And, and in the NFL, you better be able to finish games with the lead by running the ball, and you better be able to score passing the ball. And so I, I, I think the facts are just that we didn't. And so can we? Well, I'm sure we'll find out someday <laughs> again soon. We'll be tested on that again soon. It might be this Sunday. It might be two weeks from now. I, you know, I can't predict it. But you, we, we know we have to do that. And uh, I felt excellent about the way we've run our two-minute drills in practice. I think Justin's got great command of it. And uh, we had some errors that, that stopped us um, Sunday. Bill, the one part of the run game so effective in the two wins was the one-two punch. First David and Damian, then Damian and Khalil. Last week, Khalil steps up, but the second punch isn't there. For whatever reason, you got the kids, they didn't get the ball. What do you replace that with? Well, I, I don't blame. I, I wouldn't put it all on just the fact that there was one running back. That would make it sound like Cleo couldn't do it himself. I thought he did a fine job. Did yeah, I thought he did a fine job. I, 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 it. We do feel good about the group, and before what ended up happening sun, Sunday, I think it was complimentary. I, I, I don't disagree with you, but you have to find ways to do it. And there are a lot of times when, when teams have done it with run, one running back, and um, I, I guess I. I we, we feel we felt going into the game like the guys we had active ready to roll were ready to roll and, and, and it didn't prevent us from trying what we wanted to do in the run game. Bill, what is the lesson on the on the interception when he thinks it's a free play? I mean, other than look for the flag? No, you, yeah, you can't. You're not always going to see the flag. It's helpful when you see the flag. It's easy for me to the booth to say why the heck didn't they throw the flag? But if he's always looking for the flag. The ball's just got to come out fast. So immediately he has to start scanning the field or based on the, the play that we're going to run. So he, he can't look sideways. You know, he's got he's to do it. Um, I, we, we addressed it a lot as an offense. Coach Nagy actually addressed it with the offense. We like the ball to come out faster because when you're holding the ball in those plays, it, it was a play where he was able to hold the ball, but we've, we've been around a lot of those where – the protection because of the timing of the snap gets broken down quickly. So we don't want him to take unnecessary hits. So first of all, the ball has to come out. And if he's got to trust that Sam was correct in thinking it was offsides, which I, I believe it was offsides. So he's just got to trust the centers making that decision, and he's going to be right every time and go. You can't, you can't question it. If you're sitting in the booth and you're looking down, the interception gets done. Are you scanning for the flag on the field, and what's your reaction when you? I, I, I at the snap of the ball, I was I noticed that one didn't come out, and I was shocked. <laughs> Bill, this is obviously a, a formidable front across the board, that you're facing, but with Vea specifically, when you watch film of him, what what just jumps out of you that makes him so disruptive? Oh, just a, such a great job holding the point in the run game. I mean, he, he's uh, it's it's hard usually. When you double team someone, you feel like, well, if we double team him, at least we can get a little bit of movement. We can control him. It's just a matter of how long do we have to stay on to get before someone can get up to the linebacker. But but he he can destroy double teams so well that it's hard to get off for the linebackers. And then in, in the pass game, I think he has a rare ability to push the pocket. It really does. He really does. You play other great tackles, including Kenny Clark last week, Aaron Donald. Are there lessons you can learn from? preparing for those guys for this week? Sure. I, th I think the players, some of the players who get put in positions to be one-on-one -on -one at times or for the group, especially, you know, obviously you're usually dealing with the offensive line when you're talking about the defensive tackles. For the group, they also can learn lessons about, okay, how do we get help to this guy? It might be that our, our pass assignment in protection is to check a linebacker on the other side, but once we know he's not coming, how can we get help back to him? So I think individual guys can learn it, and then as a group, what we have to do as a, as a, as a staff is is constantly evaluate, um, you know, what's the best way to either neutralize this guy, take care of him, um, you know, can you just have to balance? Um, do you remove someone else from a pass route to help? It's harder to help on defensive tackles than end. You can with the back, but obviously you, you, you make those decisions. Uh, do we turn the protection to him every time? What does that do to the other side of our protection? So I think both as a staff and as players, you do that. And, um, you know, you have to make decisions going in. That's why when you face great players, you know, it, it, it tends to, to be long hours for the coaches. Bill, on the free play that, the free play that wasn't, 
And then you had a one later in the game, too, where Justin threw it back to the end zone. That one was almost picked off, too. What do you guys need to do to make sure that whether it's Allen or the other wide receivers, that they're just on the same page with the quarterback? Because obviously the ball's going to an area where the receiver's not. Right. Um, we addressed it. We watched uh, video of those plays and talked about it. We have to make sure in practice that we give them opportunities to, to work on it. Um, I'm pretty confident that the amount of attention we gave to it will, will have an impact, but we'll find out if he has to leave the pocket someday. Bill, Bill, assuming, assuming you're still calling plays, well, what has the situation been like for you, this experience been like for you, calling plays for a developing offense with a rookie quarterback in an offense that you haven't necessarily designed? Uh, I, I'm here to serve, so I walk in the building every day. What can I do to help today? And, and as, as when Matt asks me to, to take on that role, that, that's what I'm here to do. It's, it's really not about me. It's just, it's just an attitude of how, how can I help us be better. And it's, it's both uh, helping to Matt to provide leadership with the staff, help him to provide leadership with the group, and then as you're asking in the ways that he's asked me to, to help with you know, the, the football schematics and do it. So if, I, if you keep that attitude, then you don't worry about the big pictures. But are you, do you consider you feel like you're getting comfortable or getting in any kind of a groove now that you're in this role, you know, in, this, in this offense? I, th I think any time you, you, you get time on task and reps, I think, I think the communication and the working together of the staff just should get better and better. And I, I think we're on track. I do. I, um, it's easier to say yes after we win. I mean, that's, that's, honestly, <laughs> after you score 14 points, it's hard to say things are going well because that's 14's not enough.